Did you know that in both CorelDRAW and PhotoPaint you can perform conversions and sums? For example, using this one here. As you can see, I'm in millimetres. However, if I type into one of my boxes here, one thirty-second of an inch, hit enter, it will convert that to millimetres automatically for me. I can also perform sums. So if I type 26 plus 10, hit enter, you can see the result. You can also write this in its full extension. For example, 26 mm for millimetres, multiply to make sure you use the little star for multiply by 10 millimetres, hit enter, and the result, of course, is a millimetre result. And you can play around and perform other conversions and sums if you like. In my next tip, I'll show you how to really use this to your advantage. Rotating guidelines can be an invaluable tool in an aid to create perspective. If I click on my rulers, I can drag a guideline onto my page. Now while selected, if I click again, I'll bring up the rotation handles. The rotation pin can be moved to any location along the guideline. Once there, select one of the rotation handles and rotate your guideline to the appropriate angle. So as you can see, we've created our first angle of axis. Now watch this. If I use the plus key on my number pad while selected, I will create a duplicate. Now we just learnt previously how to do sums. If I come up here, I want this guideline to be the reverse angle of this one. So I'll type in 360 degrees minus the 19.9 that is already in that dialog. Hit enter and now I have a perfect set of angled guidelines. And of course repeat for the remaining axes that you require. Well let's look at some quick tips for working in photo paint. Dynamic zoom. If I simply select the zoom tool hold my finger on the ALT key, then click and drag, I can dynamically zoom in and out of my working area. To return to 100% zoom, just double click again on the zoom tool. In a similar fashion, if I select something like the paint tool that has a nib, and then I click and drag, you can see the resulting amount of paint allowed on the canvas through that nib. To resize the nib dynamically, hold your finger on the SHIFT key, click and drag, backward to reduce or forward to increase. So let's reduce, then click and drag. It's so much easier to resize on the fly. Now to clear my working area, simply double click on the eraser tool. In fact, you know you can actually instantly mask the object you're working on by double clicking on any of the masking tools. And in a similar fashion, most tools will bring up some form of relative docker when you click on them. If I double click on the eyedropper tool, I bring up the color docker. If I double click on any of the paint tools or tools that use a brush, up come the brush settings docker. Now, one of my favorite things to do is work with the symmetry toolbar. If you right click on any of the property bars, you can activate the symmetry toolbar. Now I'll dock this down the bottom and show you what it does. If I select the radial symmetry option, on my screen you'll see my nib and the little x. The little x will produce a perfect symmetry of what I'm painting with my nib, as you can see. If I increase the number of radial points, say to 6, watch what happens. You can create the most amazing and interesting effects that I know many of you will love working with. The symmetry toolbar does many other things, so play with it and see what you can come up with. Now I'm often asked, is there a way to change the look and feel of the marching ants or the mask? Yes there is. If you come up to Tools, Options, come to the Display area, you'll see right here Mask Marquee. If I change that to yellow, you'll find in this particular case that might actually work a lot better for this project. And finally, I'm often asked, if I come to Tools and Options and then General, how do you increase the number of undo levels? Well, that's it right there. Okay, let's go back to Corel Draw. Selecting objects. Well, actually, there's more of a selection of how to do this than you can imagine. Of course, it's very easy to simply click on an object and select that object. 
but I do want you to note in the status bar you can see the fill and outline of any selected object. Of course to multiply select keep your finger on the shift key, select your next object, click again and those objects will continue to add to your selection. Keep your finger on shift and click any object to remove it from the selection. OK, well that's easy, but what happens if they're all stacked one on top of the other? What do we do then? Now this top object is transparent. I did that so that you can see, but I've depicted here the stacking order of these three objects. Well, it's quite easy. Select the top object, and by using the Alt key, you can dig down through the stack. So finger on Alt, click, and I've selected the next object, click, and again the next. And if I keep my finger on the Alt key, that cycle will continue through. I can multiply select by combining Shift and Alt. So with my finger on Alt and Shift, I can now select the next object and the next object. And as you can see, all three have been selected. And of course, you can do the reverse to deselect them if you want to. There's always the old favorite of Control A. That will simply select everything. Hey, but did you know, if I select the top object on my stack and then use Tab, I can actually tab down and select the next object, then the next object in order within that stack. Shift and Tab will actually go in the reverse order back up through the stack. And here's a really great one. Did you know, again using the Alt key, if you hold your finger on Alt and just draw a marquee, whatever that marquee touches will automatically be selected. See that? Every object is selected. And a really cool thing is, you can actually hold your finger on the Alt key and click on top of an object. That object will be selected, and of course every other object within it that it touches will be selected. Well, that's it for selecting objects. This is one of my all-time favorite tips, one that few people know. If you have a big project you've been working on, it may have many pages or just be a big piece of artwork layout, you may have many fonts that you've used to date. But of course, every time you select a piece of text and you come up to your drop-down list, you've got this huge list of fonts that you want to choose from or go find the one that you've already been using. Do you know, you can select your type, right-click on the drop-down menu, and then choose to show only document fonts. In other words, the fonts that you've used so far. What that means is the next time you select a piece of text, come up to your drop-down, only those fonts you've used to date will appear in the list and that can make life so much easier. That's a really great tip.